Joining me now, former Republican governor and presidential candidate John Kasich and former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards. So, Donna, let's start with you. Uh, Vance has said that he's being sarcastic, but overall his attack line has been that Democrats are anti-family. Do you think that message is getting through? Not at all. In fact, I think that rather than being sarcastic, I mean, he has to... Uh, J.D. Vance really needs to take a look at what they want their campaign to do. Can't, most campaigns are about expanding the electorate, adding, not subtracting. And every time that J.D. Vance either makes one of these statements or so-called clarifications, he alienates another group of voters. And, you know, I have to say, I mean, going after um, w women who don't have children, that's a large swath, whether by choice or by chance, uh, of the electorate. And I just don't really see how this advances uh, the, the cause of the Trump campaign, but that's not my job to determine. <laughs> you know, Governor Case, it's, I do think it, it's a little interesting. You know, J.D. Vance, before he became a politician, you know, part of his identity was going on these conservative shows and trying to make headlines, right? He wanted to go viral with some of the things he said. Maybe he wouldn't have said these things if he were a presidential candidate or a vice presidential candidate. But now he finds himself in a situation where he could try and explain it away, but he seems to just be doubling down on this. I mean, is this really helping the Republican cause and, and does it hurt him with female voters? Well, of course it does. And uh, look, we have something going on here. You have this, uh, what has just come out, this tape of, of Vance. Um, he should apologize or, you know, he, he doesn't even he doesn't even seem to want to kind of walk it back, which which I don't really understand. And then, and you've got Trump here over in Arlington Cemetery and all the news is about those guys. And if the news is all about them and it's not about Kamala Harris and what she stands for, or if she flip flopped or whatever, how are they going to win an election doing that? And so, you know, they're they're really, really out of step. And it's still, you know, we're, we're not the Labor Day. We're right around the corner. Um, but they've they've just lost their footing because in order for them to win, in my opinion, they've got to make the case that uh, Harris is, has flip flopped so much. They need to make the case on the economy about what's happened over the last three and a half years with inflation and real wage increases or the lack thereof. But if it's all about what Vance said, you know, or what it's about Trump being in, I mean, how, how do you go to Arlington mm -hmm. Cemetery and cause a problem? Then you see uh, they're missing the boat. So uh, J.D. Vance, actually, Governor, uh, was just speaking in the last few minutes at the International Association of Firefighters Union in Boston. He did what you think he should do. He did go after Biden and Harris on the economy and crime. But he also was booed when he said that he and Trump are the most pro-worker Republican ticket. Let's take a listen. President Trump and I are proud to be the most pro-worker Republican ticket in history. And I want to talk about why we're fighting for working people, why we're going to fight for unions and non-union alike. So, Governor, I, you know, I, I kind of wonder, I mean, the booze aside, this may not necessarily have been a friendly crowd. This is a, a union that's endorsed uh, sure. uh, President Biden in the past. They haven't endorsed anyone yet. But is this kind of what you're talking about? You've got to go to these people and, and make a case, right? Well, I mean, you're going to go, where are you going to go? Where, what's the venue? So now, you know, you're bringing up the fact that here's this guy saying this and he's getting booed. So, again, we're off the subject. And mm -hmm. I, look, I, I think Republicans want to do a better job of being able to attract uh, members of labor. And, and in some cases, they've had elections where they've been able to do it. I mean, I look at Youngstown, Ohio. Ryan, you're familiar with Youngstown, a heavy blue collar, and it's been going Republican. But uh, it, it's more difficult to go at the leadership of the unions and try to shove something down their throats because they're not going to buy. They're not going to buy that. And, and this approach by Republicans has to go on over a long period of time. And uh, it's a big challenge for them to be able to do that, in, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I mean, it'd be I, look, I mean, all those workers are important. But you go to a union place and uh, somebody who, you know, is not going to endorse you and you start making those charges, you, you, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. And so, Donna, on the other side of the coin here, and, and to Governor Kasich's point about the economy, uh, it does appear poll after poll shows that voters are frustrated by the economy. They're frustrated by inflation. It's a top issue. Uh, and Republicans have been pretty effective at, at putting that at the feet of the current administration. Uh, is there a way for Kamala Harris to convince voters that she'd be different from Joe Biden when she's been his vice president this entire time? 
Well, I think that she made that case, frankly, at the at the uh, Democratic convention. And I think the way that you see that measured is that she is not being painted with the same brush, uh, fairly or unfairly, uh, that President Biden was when he was at the top of the ticket, that voters are willing to give her a fair shot in making her case on the on the economy prospectively looking forward about what she would do. Um, if she's laid out an economic agenda that's about uh, curbing costs and uh, decreasing inflation. And I think that that's an important case to be made uh, to voters. And look, I think workers across the board are gonna look to see who's gonna be on their side. And at the end of the day, they're gonna conclude that the guy who is a union buster who stands in the way of, of, of working people is not going to be on their side. I think Kamala Harris has an important argument to make and that she clearly is making some headway there. And how important is this interview that she has tonight and then the debate next month? Well, um, I think it's really important. I think it's really important. And uh, she knows that. Look, she went, came out of a very successful uh, convention walls, just like uh, presidents and vice presidential nominees for many decades is going to sit in front of uh, with this interview answer some more detailed uh, questions on the policies that she's already laid out and i think that um you know this is good for her to do um and i'm sure that there will be many more of them even leading up and after following the debates and governor Lee, Ryan, last I, word. I think i i, yeah, I think ahead. she should not had her vice president sitting there with her. I think she yeah, should be uh -huh. letting people know who she is. I don't think she made the case at the conventions for what she's going to do with the economy. And that's the vulnerability that she, that she has and the opportunity that Trump has. But if all we're going to do is talk about, you know, childless women and we're going to talk about what happens at Arlington Cemetery, they, they're not making that case. That is not. And if you go to the wrong place to deliver an economic message, that doesn't work either. She's got a lot to say. And I'm I'm really I think she should have done this without anybody sitting next to her. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do follow up questions when you've got somebody else there. But maybe they're kind of wading into the water. But look, we're yeah. 69 days away and people have a right to know exactly precisely what she's going to do. Yeah.